wrong, Jerry? First? Okay. No, I mean, uh, The answer is wrong? Yes. Are you wrong? Yes. How wrong? Did I type it in the wrong place or did I do it wrong in the video? Which question? Six. Six A. Six A. Right. So six is slightly wrong, is it? Okay. Wrong in the video as well? There is no video. <laughs> okay. Well, then I'll need to make a video for it. Uh, and the answer is slightly wrong, though. But I can't see the video. <laughs> you found the video? Yeah, I found it. By searching? Yes, by searching. Very, very cool. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the video. I'll do this in the tutorial then uh, on Friday. Okay. On Friday. Okay. Right. Good, good. We'll continue, so. Uh, I think the next lesson is weight. <coughs> hmm? Physics. Mechanics. We did force last time. Mm. So no weight, okay. Okay, so wait, you can write that down. What's the next topic we're looking at? Yeah? You got this, Jerry? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so we all know the word, or I hope we know the word gravity. So gravity is a noun, the adjective is gravitational. The gravitational force is the force of attraction, like pull, between all matter. And you only usually feel this when the object is extremely large. For example, Earth, Moon, Sun. So you can feel the Earth pulling you, you can feel the Moon, the Sun, all of this. But technically, everything has some small pull to it. You only feel it when it's really large. So, I guess what really is important for me is that you have this as an adjective. So, gravitational force is a type of force. Yeah, so can you at least write the first sentence down? I think it's enough. Okay, you have this? Yeah? Okay. Gravitational force is what keeps you on Earth and not floating in space. It's a good thing. So the weight of an object is the amount of gravitational force that object feels. So this you need as well. Can you see if I move a bit? You can see okay? Yeah. 
Okay. Are going to have this definition of text and then we need them? No. Mm. No, you could. The the weight one. You could. I haven't seen it though. But I'm going with what's in the uh the syllabus. So, you know, if the syllabus says students need to see this definition, then that means that definition could be on the exam. Now I know which definitions are popular in the exam and common, and this is not one of them, but it could be on the exam. It's possible. Okay, continue. Okay, so let's find the formula for a weight on Earth. I think this is quite straightforward, but we'll do it anyways. So you have a mass M, and it's being pulled down by this weight force. Uh, but weight is a force, so it's equal to F. And Newton says F is equal to MA. And we learned that the A is gravity's G. So we just end up with uh, this very simple formula. Weight is mass multiplied by G. Very straightforward. So uh, note this, please. Okay, continue. Continue. Okay. So we have weight equals mg, where w is the weight, m is the mass, and g is the acceleration due to gravity, the usual. Okay, so here's a simple one for you all to do. It should only take you a few seconds. Uh, what is the weight of a 2 kg mass here? 19 point something. Yeah. 19.62 newtons. Easy peasy. Uh, how much does a 2 kg physics book weigh on the moon? And you can ex uh, take the acceleration due to gravity on the uh, moon is six times smaller than what it is on the Earth. So it's g, g over six on the moon, six times smaller. So now what do we get? 3.27 newtons. Yeah, okay, easy so far. A uh, 2 kg physics book weighs 4 newtons on an asteroid. What is the mass of the book? 2 kg. So all straightforward here. Okay, so which will hit the ground first if I drop them both at the same time? The ball. But we have a small problem if we try to work it out. So for example, here's the ball, here's the feather, and here we have U, V, A, T, S. And let's just say S is a meter. It falls one meter. And they both start at rest. And the V we don't know, and the uh, T we don't know, but we know the A. So something must be wrong here because the information is the same, so they should give the same answer for T. But we know that this time is bigger, it will take longer. So what is wrong with my picture here? Uh, yeah, so uh, I mean, which number is wrong because of that? The A is wrong. Yeah. So what's happening here is it's not okay. It's true to say it is here, but not really true to say it is here because yes, in both cases there's a weight, but as you were saying, in the case of the feather, there's a significant force acting up, which is slowing it down. So I think you said air resistance, which is fine. We have another word for it as well. Um, so far, we've only considered one force, the weight. But in real life, there's many forces. So for another example, we have a car here. It's not just the force of the engine that makes the car go forward. You also have this backwards force here, which tries to slow the car down. 
So the vocabulary here is that the force that drives the car forward is called the thrust, and the force that tries to slow it down is called the drag. And in real life, there's always both, just like with the feather that falls. Okay. So we definitely need this vocabulary. So if you can note this, we have thrust and we have drag. So if you can write that down, please. Oops. Got that? What is drag? What do you mean, what is drag? No, what I mean is, uh, Jerry, do you want me to explain the idea? Explain the English words? Like, what, what part of it do you want me to explain? Uh, well, I, I don't know. Okay, alright. Well, I'll do my best. So, um, drag is a word in English. In a book. It's a force, but it's a force that slows. It always tries to stop oh. something moving. So the drag is always opposite the thrust. So they're always in opposites. Yeah. And you can have drag everywhere. So like when I push this across the table, the thrust is this way, but there's a drag this way. You know, or if I drop it, the weight is down, but the drag is up. So you always have the pairs here. Uh, okay. Which is bigger? Well, it depends on what's happening. So at the beginning, which is bigger? When the car just starts. The trust is bigger at the beginning. But as the car goes faster and faster, what happens to the drag? There's more of it, yeah, there's bigger and bigger, until they're equal. Yeah? So, when that happens, we call that the terminal velocity. It's the maximum velocity. And we usually only use it to describe things which are falling in, in space. So, terminal velocity is the maximum velocity. So, as this is falling, you have the weight and you have the drag. And what will happen, here's a picture, uh, the weight stays the same, but the drag, the air resistance, gets bigger and bigger until air resistance equals weight. And then you have no more force, the two have cancelled, so you have zero force then. So he's still falling, but he's not getting any faster. So we call this terminal velocity. And uh, this is the definition which is popular in the exam. I've seen it a few times, okay? So write this one down. So you have all other vocabulary, drag and thrust? Yeah, you, there's, there's quite a few. There's friction, resistance, drag. They're all backwards. Forward, you have uh, trust, uh, driving force, uh, tractive force. There's lots of synonyms here. Friction. Huh? Friction. friction is like a drag, yeah. We use that motion. Oh, yeah, we'll use friction sometimes. Uh, I think I would use it in a later lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it can be difficult to deal with drag force because the tra oh. It can be difficult to deal with drag force because drag force usually depends on how fast it's going, which actually makes it quite difficult to deal with. So often we ignore this and make it an approximation, which I'll explain when we do some examples now. Okay, do you have that definition? Yeah. yeah?
Got that definition? No, no, I can wait. There's no rush, no panic. If you need me to wait, just tell me. You have this then? Yeah. Frappuccino? No, that's not frappuccino. Try Iced coffee? Latte. A what? Iced latte. Never heard of it. Coffee? No, I don't know if that's my first time to drink this. And you'll have it again? Okay. What's it taste like? Mexican Is it juice. Mexican juice. Wow, okay. <laughs> right, continue now. Yep. <laughs> I think the subway might open today in the canteen. Yeah, I was talking to the chef yesterday. My open stay or tomorrow. Ooh. Yes. Oh. Yes. You know Subway, don't you? <laughs> yes, I think it might open today. They're building. You've probably saw them building. It's going to be a Subway. I don't know when it's going to Ah, okay. <laughs> well, I don't, so. They really I didn't see that. Ah, you didn't notice it. This is right beside the Starbucks. Oh, really? Yes. Literally beside it, yeah. It's, it's so fun. You'll notice it when it's open, I'm I sure. I'm going to open inside the Starbucks, I mean, just near the Starbucks. Right beside the Starbucks. So it'll be Starbucks and then Subway. <coughs> you can get both. Okay, continue now? Yeah. Right, so this is a question we'll answer together. A car of mass M starts at rest and accelerates with acceleration A by means of a force, which comes from the engine, of course. The driver keeps his foot down, as in he keeps his foot on the pedal, but he doesn't continue to accelerate forever. Why not? Well, we already talked about this, so what's happening here? He's reached the terminal velocity. That the drag has equaled the thrust then. Okay, so. let's, uh, let's do... <coughs> let's see. Yeah, okay, so this isn't really a drag one. It's just a quick... UVATS one. So very quickly, uh, a coin is dropped from a 100 meter building. How long would it take for the coin to hit the ground? Okay, give me the T here, please. So 100 meters dropped, how long till it hits the ground? One second. Oh, one second will be very quick. Huh? Uh, you calculate it. It's rough. <laughs> it's not quite 10 seconds. <laughs> Calculate it. U is zero. <laughs> B A. T is what I want. S is minus a hundred. Okay. So S equals U T, which is zero, and then a half A T squared. This is just me saying S equals U T is a half A T squared. Yeah. So then T will be square root 100 over 4.905, which is about root 20, isn't it, which is, what's that? About 4.5 seconds? Yeah. If I did this in real life, would it take longer or shorter time to hit the ground? Longer. longer, shorter, what are we committed to? Longer. 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 Because if there's a drag, it means it's not accelerating as quickly, which means it'll be reaching the higher speeds slower. Uh, so it'll take longer to travel the same distance. Okay. Now, here is our first example, really, where we have to actually calculate drag. So we have a 100 gram steel ball and it's dropped in a tall beaker of oil, like a pipe of oil. And the oil is 80 centimetres deep. And you let go of the steel ball and it falls through the oil. And it takes quite a long time to sink through. It takes 10 seconds to travel the 80 centimetres. So, you know, you can picture it moving slowly through it. It takes 10 seconds to reach the bottom. Uh, and I want to know what is the drag force. So I'll do it. 
It's a bit tricky, but I just want you to either write this down or draw the picture with the information. Okay, so write or draw, please, and I'll do it in a moment. Write or draw. And if you draw, make sure you have all the information in the picture and that the picture is beautiful. See, this side is choosing the drawing, and this side here is choosing the writing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I go for drawing, okay. Okay, do you all have a good picture of what's happening here? Okay, let's have a look at it now. Okay, so, uh, I'll draw very quickly too. So we put this in here and it sinks to the bottom. Let's get our info. U, V, A, T, S. The U, zero, and the S is minus 0 0.8 meters. The V we don't know. The T we, don't, we do know. 10. And the A we don't know because the A is definitely not 9.81 because if it was 9.81 this would be over in a second. So we don't know the A. So naturally, the first thing we should do is get the A. Uh, what formula will give me the A? Um, S equals, will it? Yeah. So S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Okay, so minus 0 0.8 equals a half a hundred A. That's it, isn't it? Uh, so the A will be minus 0 0.8 over 50. That's right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So the A is minus 1.6 over 100. So that's minus 0, tiny, uh, 0 0.016 meters per second squared. And the negative? Y negative decelerating. Well, no, not okay. We'll try not to use acceleration mm -hmm. or deceleration. Uh, the negative because it's the it's acting downwards. So it's just like G is minus nine point eight. Well, G is gravity is minus nine point eight one. Um, it's just smaller than nine point eight one. Much smaller than nine point eight one. Okay? Of course, this isn't finished, but it's a start. Uh, so let's look at what's happening here. The ball is falling. There's two forces acting on it. We have our weight, and we have a drag here. And I think I'm looking, to, uh, uh, I'm looking for the drag. Now, notice how I say the average drag force, so let me just write D, but just stick a little A on the bottom for, or AVG on the bottom for average. Now, why do you think I'm saying the average drag force? It changes, yeah. So, at the beginning, the drag, for, the drag force is small, and the weight is the same. At the end, the weight is still the same and the drag force is large. It's quite difficult, although not impossible, but quite difficult to deal with a change in drag force. So we'll say that the drag force is approximately constant, even though it's not, just roughly constant. So if we look at the ball here, we have the force down, which is mg, which is 0 0.1 times 9.81. And we have the upward force here, which I call 
D here. So, what is the total force down? That will equal 0 0.1 times 9.81 minus D. And Newton says that will equal MA, the A being down. Now I've gotten rid of my minus and just replaced the word minus, just replaced the minus with the word down. So the minus is just to tell me it's acting down. So if I just say that it's acting down, I don't have to bother with the minus. I've stated quite clearly it's a downward force and a downward acceleration. So I can drop the minus if I like. So now I have uh, 0 0.981 minus D equals 0 0.1 times 0 0.016 which is 0 0.0016. So I have 0 0.981 minus D equals this. So uh, D is equal to that. Yeah. Uh, so what is that really is the drag force Newtons. So this is how much drag force there is. So the, the key is remember the F is a total force. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Uh, KJ, you're asking about this part is the weight the W. Yeah. Drag, is it? Acceleration? Yeah. No, I know, as, we were, as I was saying earlier, the D and actually the A they both change. At the very beginning, the D is zero. And so the A is actually a full minus 9.81. It's too difficult, not impossible, just too difficult to deal with a change in acceleration. Now, it's not impossible. It's just you're not ready for it yet. <laughs> We will do something like that soon. Yeah, I think in fact maybe that's the next example. I can't remember, but that's a good uh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, Bruce. Yeah. You need time. You sure? So. There was um it's not always going to be like my example here. So just before you try the questions, uh Jerry had an idea which is useful for some questions. So Jerry was saying, um at the beginning it's zero drag. And at the end we'll call the drag, I don't know, uh D F for final. So he was saying, Well why can't we do something like saying D F plus zero over two. Okay. Which is fine. We'll call that D average. Mm -hmm. But that's really I don't really care about this. I just care about this. So there's no point in writing this equals this. Okay. If I said though what was the final drag, then this would be useful. Because previously I said, uh, this is the drag. But really, that's equal to zero, the drag at the start, plus x, the drag at the end, over two. So if I really wanted to, I could work out the final drag force, which would be twice 
that number. So your idea, you will need it for one of the questions I'm going to give you. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's have a look here. So, yeah, I'll let you try these now for a couple of minutes. Let's see. Only four questions. <laughs> But a bit hard. And then uh, the next lesson gets a bit hard too. I don't know if we'll need two hours for the next one. We'll see how we do. <coughs> okay, take one pass along. You can try these now for a few minutes. Um, yes. They will have you thinking. That was English, wasn't it, Bruce? Yeah. Good. Good. I <coughs> know. <coughs> <coughs> oh, I believe in Bruce. He can do it. Ah? Huh? Bruce has his forgot to. You know skydiver? There's a picture. Ah, that's why I put in the picture. Oh, Jerry, you don't want to use paper? It would make me feel better, thank you. <coughs>
are we doing with the first one? Success? No success. I don't know that. Uh, Some success. Uh, yes, Jerry? Uh, one A. I don't know what is that. Huh? What do you say? In number one A? Yeah. What don't you know? Do you know you? Yeah. What's you? Zero. What's V? Fifty six. Minus fifty six. What's A? We do know. Minus nine point eight one. We know I don't know. Yeah, but what does it say in brackets? Ignore drive. What does that mean? <laughs> no drag. <laughs> yes, this is no drag. <laughs> Go on, look up your dictionary. Go on. Look up ignore. I G N O R E. <laughs> Important word, yeah? Have um, most people finished number one? Yeah. You're doing number two? KJ? Yeah.